Check us out at HeinoFestFeller.com. We've been ready for years of providing you excellent service. Is it our Heinold and Feller? Your family has to call. What are its budget meters? This one up has the buzzer and we go to overtime. Big celebrations for an electric atmosphere. We've got it all in the valley. We've got some of the best. We mean the best. We mean basketball in the nation. In the postseason, it starts here. Okay. Okay. Let's the party. We'll see you in the questions. March 10th through 13th, presented by Grinnell Mutual Insurance. Visit NBCQuadCities.com for ticket information. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. And we are back here once again at the Athletics Recreational Center for our Northwest Health Men's Basketball pregame show. I'm Zach Collins, and let's just look into Trinity Christian. It's a team that really no one's been able to look at too heavily. There's not too much information about this team, but at the same time, they have some very good caliber players. Braxton Barnheiser, a very good player, actually had a couple Division I offers one of those being Detroit Mercy, a team that's pretty local around here. Plays Notre Dame just about every year if you're a big Notre Dame fan. They're a very good team overall. And Barnheiser actually wanted to go to a smaller school. He wanted to get some playing time. He wanted to have the ability to not sit the bench all the time. And he really did find that at Trinity Christian. And even his brother Brooks is another very good player. His brother was actually accepted to Northwestern University. He will be playing his senior year of high school this season and will go on to play at Northwestern. But the Barnheiser is a very, very good family of basketball players. And you can't even talk about this Trinity Christian team without a number one James Pennington. A very, very good athlete. He's a Trinity Christian Athletics Male Athlete of the Year. And he was also a very great in the Chicago Land Collegiate Athletic Conference as he was first team all conference and NCCAA North Sea All Regional Player of the Year. So another very good player out of Calumet City, Illinois. Averages about 18 points a game, eight point, excuse me, 7.6 rebounds, 4.9 assists. He's going to be our player to watch in this game. Following Braxton Barnheiser, just two very good caliber players. Barnheiser actually averaging 18.6 points per game and 7.4 rebounds. So two very good players on this team with Barnheiser being a sophomore and Bennington being a senior. We're going to look to the beacons of Valparaiso and a couple of very good players and some that we're going to watch out for in this game. Of course, you can't talk about it enough. Sheldon Edwards is a very, very good player. Hasn't been starting in the last few games here and doesn't look like he's going to be starting in this matchup here today against Trinity Christian either. Ben Cricky finally returning. He's averaging 14 points a game, three rebounds. But, of course, that's only in three games that he's played throughout the season so far. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops in himself. Of course, he's looking healthy. No braces at all here from what I see on Cricky on the floor here tonight. And just playing some great basketball. He led the team in scoring last season, of course. And the Edmonton Canadian Navid is just a very good player overall. And he's great in the post position. He's a player that you want in the post position. Valpo really doesn't have a big post player. Really, the only one you can look at is Thomas Kithier, who's been playing some very good basketball as well. He's averaging 13.2 points per game, 7.2 rebounds per game. Played a lot of basketball at Michigan State for the Spartans. He led the Spartans in the highest field goal percentage on the team. And his mother actually played volleyball at Eastern Michigan. An interesting fact about Thomas Kith here. He's actually a Michigan native as well, and it's great to have him here in Valparaiso playing some basketball with this great team. Overall, he's a very good caliper player, a very good team player, and a very hard fighting player as well. As Luke Gore looks to be coming up here to, we'll be able to talk to him in just a few moments here as well. But, you know, just looking at this Beacon team, they won a few games. They won their last game. They're hoping to get two in a row here because that would be some good time energy for this team. Good time player and just about good times and everything for this team and this player. We're really looking for this team to be good. Aaron Gordon not averaging too many points. He will start in today's contest as well. But at the same time, Aaron Gordon just not doing too much on the floor. 
You know, he's good in the defensive position, but we're not seeing him contribute very much on offense. But we'll see what he does here as we are joined by Sophia head coach Luke Gore. And I'm just wondering, how are you doing today after that tournament in the Bahamas? Uh, I'm doing well, Zach. Good to see you, my man. Good to see you, too. So, coach, you have success in the, in the tournament. You're in your first two wins of the season against top opponents of Jacksonville State and Tulane. To get those two wins, and mind you, they were battles the whole way through. How does that push your team coming into this game? Well, if you look at our, our whole schedule, every game we played has been a battle. Stanford, we didn't bring the battle to them. Um, it should have been a battle, but it wasn't. But every other game's been a battle. And I think Jacksonville State might. I mean, they're about as good a team as we play. I mean, as, uh, talent-wise, they're as good as anybody we played. And to come out on top of that and, and battle like we did that game uh, was really good. So uh, having some positive results uh, when we've been so close so many times was good. And um, it was a good trip for bonding and everything like that. So it was uh, well worth it. That's great. I mean, another great thing is Sheldon Edwards in these games. I mean, he's been had some great games in the tournament. He's battled the whole way through. He had a great game in the last game against Tulane. He had 23 points, three steals, and three blocks, coming at a crucial point of the game as well. Just talk to us about how he's progressing throughout the season. Don't see that he's starting in this game, but he is progressing throughout the season. Well, yeah, starting doesn't really matter uh, for a basketball player. It's really about um, doing doing whatever you can to help the team. And Sheldon's a huge, huge role. For a team, and he's really, you know, he's so talented, um, and he's learning how to use his talent properly. You know, some of these things that you know that he struggled with early in the year, he's starting to just figure that out. Really understand where his spots are and um, how to attack, and, and he's turning in a good defender. He, and he's going to be the first to tell you he's not always been the best defender, and he's he's really working hard at it and coming up with huge plays down the stretch against Tulane as he has in other games. I mean, he's been playing some great basketball. You're also looking for your first home win of the season. Drop two on this floor. Trinity Christian's a pretty good team in NAIA competition with the likes of Rex and Barnheiser and James Pennington. How have you prepared your team in getting ready for this game? Uh, we're just really focused on competing, uh, being intense, having an edge. Uh, be tough in everything that we do, how we need to be for whoever we play. And so, once again, we every day we take a progress uh, approach. We how do we get better today? And if our progress keeps going, it's all about the bigger picture of trying to be ready for the Valley. And the Valley's coming up after this game. So uh, we got no choice to be, be ready. And we're playing an unbelievable Drake team in a few days. And so um, we want this game to, to compete and get after it and, um, and just learn how to – uh, get stops in a row, and then how we translate down to the offensive end. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for joining us here on our pregame show. We wish you good luck in this game against Trinity Christian, and nice job in the Bahamas, by the way, as well. Thanks, Zach. That was associate head coach Luke Gore of the Valparaiso Beacons, and we're just about underway to get for this game here as well. It's going to be a great matchup, and make sure to stay tuned here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network as we'll take a two-minute break, and we'll be right back here to deliver you the action. So we'll be right back with the final portion of our Northwest Health men's basketball pregame show here in just about two minutes here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Welcome to Holiday Inn Express in Valparaiso, Indiana. The proud corporate sponsor of Valparaiso University Athletics. Holiday Inn Express in Valparaiso is an 85 room hotel that provides excellent customer service with modern hospitality. Enjoy a complimentary full hot breakfast buffet with our signature cinnamon roll. All rooms include flat screen television, wireless internet, and a coffee station. Check out the video in the school, or pool, or exercise room. In this space, we have it. Just move us away from any restaurants, offering local flair, beauty shop, and a special bar plaza. Come to a ride at home and make your next stop ready to stay with all your next class. Call the next reservation at 219 264 Terry also has been voted twice as the Times Best of the Region. Terry sells the best quality and most energy efficient windows and siding on the market today. Call Terry at 219-476-0400 for a very Personal loans, visa credit cards, and home equity loans. We are here to help you. 
deserve. Make it easy by simply applying for your loan online at Allegis.org or stop into the Allegis office nearest you. Not only can Allegis offer affordable payments, but also extra benefits such as a fast application process and no payments for 90 days. Come to a place where we take care of hardworking community people like you. Visit Allegis.org for more information today. That is Allegis.org. Contact Allegis for more information on the 90 day no payment option for membership required for loan disbursement. Live on WVR 95.1 and streaming at WVRTheSource.com, you're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. And after the national anthem, we are back here just about ready to give you the starting lineups for both teams. We'll, of course, start off with Trinity Christian Trolls. Starting for the Trolls is number one, James Pennington. Number four, Vince Overway. Number 24, Miles Johnson. Number 32, Eric Cohn. And number 44, Braxton Barnheiser. And, of course, the Trolls are coached by Jason Hawkins, a former Valparaiso Beacon himself, playing from 2000 to 2003 under both Scott and Homer Drew. Scott Drew now, of course, the coach of Baylor, winning a big-time game and a big-time tournament as well. So it's great to see the Drews being very successful, as well as his brother Bryce at Grand Canyon University. And just before we get to the starting lineups for the Beacons, we'll just announce them here. Number zero, Thomas Kithier. Number 10, Aaron Gordon. Number 12, Kevion Taylor. Number 21, Trevor Anderson. And number 23, Ben Kricke. And, you know, like even Coach Luke Gore said, it really doesn't matter who's starting in these games. What it does matter is how hard they play, the work that they give you. I mean, he's right. Basketball doesn't matter if you start or not. If you're on the bench, you got to come off the bench. you got to contribute in terms of bench points. you got to contribute in terms of that team caliber. And you got to contribute in just about every moment that you possibly can. Valpo, they're able to find someone in Sheldon Edwards, and they're able to find a few other players. Probably see Darius Diavero in a couple minutes, and DeAndre Young as well. Preston Reed here, probably won't see any time from him, as well as Camp Alessi, possibly towards the end of this game. But at the same time, we're going to be looking at some great players, such as Sheldon Edwards and another great player, Joe Hedstrom. We're hoping to see him play a little bit more in this game, especially against Trinity Christian. He's only averaged about two points per game, but we'd like to see him get some playing time. We'll see here as we send you down to the PA announcer for the Valparaiso Beacons starting lineups. <laughs> Starters for the Valparaiso Beacons. Their starters are sponsored by Allegis Credit Union. Allegis is offering up to $400 for vehicle refinancing and $200 for new student accounts. Visit Allegis.org for more information. Go Valpo! And we're about to just get underway here in this game. Trinity Christian in their blue away uniforms with light blue trim and white lettering. Valpo in the home, white uniforms with brown trim and gold lettering. And, of course, we're able to get started here. Valpo really looking to play some good defense here. And Trinity is looking to get downwards inside the paint. Valpo's 
Probably going to try to attempt to leave them out of it as they did again in the game against Tulane. We're finally seeing some good Valpo defense as they're ready for the tip off here. Miles Johnson and Ben Crickey will be tipping off the ball here in the center shield as we're underway here in the arc. Valpo will win the tip. Thomas Kith here will hand it off to Trevor Anderson as he goes up the right side. Goes left to Kith here. Back to Anderson. Dribbles to the middle circle. Goes on the outside to Aaron Gorn on the left side. Comes back out, puts it back up top to Kith here. Anderson, 12 seconds on the shot clock, drives to the Valley logo, gets it to Cricky. He shoots, misses, rebound by Kith here. Hand off to Taylor, given to Anderson, goes for three, no good. Rebound coming from Miles Johnson of the Trolls. They'll take the ball down floor. Johnson looking for a player, finds Pennington on the right side of the Homer Drew logo. Bennington, top of the key here. Ghost tries to find a spot, can't find anything. Johnson driving in here, gets down low in the lower circle, double team, passes back out to Pennington, fakes a three, six seconds on the shot clock, puts up a floater, no good, rebound by Cricky. Cricky gets the ball to Anderson, the left side, back to Cricky. Cricky fakes the three, passes to Anderson. Anderson looks down low, good look to Kithier. Kithier, spin move, post move, and it's good. Good move by Thomas Kith here. Put the first two points on the board for the Beacons. 2-0. 1845 remaining in this game. In the first half, I mean. Barnheiser driving left side. Puts up the floater. No good. Rebound by Anderson. Anderson quick to go down the floor. Slows things up. Drives to the basket. Easy lane. But gets blocked down low by Eric Cohn. Anderson drove down low. Had it wide open. Cohn just... Drove right in there. Does get fouled. That will be Cone's first foul of the game. And Anderson will go to the line for two. Trevor Anderson out of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Played at Wisconsin University in Green Bay as the Wisconsin native makes his first free throw of the game. He actually did play against Valpo in the Horizon League tournament on January of 2017, his freshman year against Matt Lodick. Amazing that he was able to play in that game. Valpo now leading 4 nothing as Anderson makes both of his free throws. Give it to Johnson. Stolen by Anderson. He drives. Goes in. Easy layup and he scores. Puts up an easy two points for the Beacons here. Trinity Christian just about no ball control here so far. Valpo's defense penetrating in every single opportunity they get as Pennington goes to the right side of the three-point arc. Hands it off to Overway. Overway passes to Barnheiser on the left side. Screen out top. Barnheiser can't find anything. Goes back to the top of the key. Goes to the right side. Right corner for Johnson. Misses. Rebounded by Gordon. Gordon passes. Sees Cricky in the lane. Cricky goes down and slips. It in. And that'll be a timeout for the Trolls of Trinity Christian. Valpo 8, Trinity nothing. 17 minutes, 50 seconds remaining. And it will be a 30-second timeout, so we will stay here with you. And my gosh, a lot to talk about just here in the first 2 minutes and 10 seconds of play. Valpo's just playing some excellent defense, finding just about every lane they can, driving to the basket every time. And so far for Valpo, we've only seen one three-point attempt for this Beacons team. So far, we've just seen some great defense down low in the paint and down low in the post position as well. Valpo really not having to set up too many plays other than the one two-point play that they had for the first two points of the game. There's been fast break points from this point on. We'll see if Trinity Christian can finally gain some ball control here as they'll bring the ball down the floor. Pennington will cross the timeline. Goes top of the key, guarded by Taylor. Hands it off to Johnson on the right side of the three-point post. Gets it to Eric Cohn. Cohn passes to Pennington. Pennington on the left side, three-point arc. They'll be guarded by Gordon. Tries driving into him, finds Barnheis at the top of the key. Back to Pennington, down low, puts up a floater and scores. Good bucket there by James Pennington. Puts two points up in the first two points for the Trolls here in this game. Valpo with a quick tempo offense. Kevion Taylor will go to Thomas Kith here. Kith here on the left block. Guarded up high, puts up a floater, no good. It will be tipped out. Ben Cricky getting that possession there on the rebound. Pass to Taylor on the right side, top of the key. Taylor drives down the left hand left, scores. 10-2, Valpo leading in this game, just under 17 minutes in the first half. 
Trinity Christian now with the ball to via the Valpo logo. Passes on the outside of Johnson. Johnson back to Pennington, top of the key. Pennington drives, finds a middle circle, shoots, doesn't make it, and a rebound by Trevor Anderson. Anderson tries to find a lane. He's going to pass out. Kevion Taylor gets that ball in the right three-point arc corner. Pass to Taylor. to meet Kithier up top. Passes down to Kriki. Rolls around the rim. Doesn't make it. Rebound by Trinity Christmas, Miles Johnson. Pass to the Barnheiser on the left side three-point arc. In the corner, James Pennington here. Pennington finding Cone at top of the key. Right side, Barnheiser for three. It's good. Wow, what a deep three by Barnheiser. About a yard off from the three-point arc. Good defense by Valpo. Even better shot by Braxton Barnheiser. Anderson goes top of the key to Kithier. Hands it off to Gordon. Gordon's trying to find Kithier down low. He's double-teamed down low on the left block. Passes to Cricky. Cricky tries to go up with it. Gets blocked. Ball goes out of bounds. Bring two players in for this game, which are number 33, Trey Woodyard, and another for Trinity Christian. We'll be back here in just 60 seconds as we take our first media timeout of the game. Valpo 10, Trinity Christian 5. We'll be back in 60 seconds here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Arch Madness is all about... The excitement, the fans, the history, the big moment. It's all about the madness. And March, it begins here. It's the 2022 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Tournament, March 3rd to March 6th, presented by Valley Sports Indiana. Visit archmadness.com for ticket information. Yo, yo, this is your cup holder talking. The little round thing between your car seats. Now, I normally have a nice cold bottle of Mountain Dew in me. But at the moment, I'm empty. That's right, no Mountain Dew. Nothing in here but a couple of quarters and a dime. A fully capable cup holder like me is carrying your loose change. Look, I'm not made for loose change. I'm made to keep Mountain Dew within reach at all times. Just inches from your hand. So find the store already. Grab some Dew. Toss it back, then place that bottle where it belongs. Mountain Dew. Do the do. Hey, you! Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. Today's broadcast of Novel Basketball is brought to you by Culver's. Enjoy the Culver's Deluxe layered with real Wisconsin cheese, crisp lettuce, ripe tomatoes, pickles, sweet red onion, and our signature mayo. It's topped with a lightly buttered toasted bun. It's our butter burger at its best. Welcome to Delicious. And Valpo just eating a delicious burger here early in this first half. 10 to 5 leading over Trinity Christian. Seeing a lot of good fast break opportunities coming for this Valpo team. A lot of quick tempo offense as well. Valpo putting in a few subs here. Keandre Young, Sheldon Edwards, and Trey Woodyard. And they're also putting in Darius Diavera, the only starter still remaining in this game, Thomas Kithier. And we're back here, of course, in the arc. 10 to 5, 15 48 remaining in the first half. Diavera will take the ball out of bounds here for the Beacons. We'll see how they set up here. Screen down low. We'll see if he gets it to Edwards. Rather goes to Kithier on the right block. Out to Edwards, top of the key. Edwards goes to the right block, misses, rebounds by Trinity. Never mind, it's actually stolen by Falpo, and a good pass there by Kithier up top. Looks to the right corner for Young, misses, and a rebound once again by Kithier, puts it up top to Edwards. Goes to Diavero. Diavero looks to Woodyard on the left side, and stolen by Miles Johnson of Trinity Christian. Passes left side to Pennington. Pennington brings it up top of the key, back up to Eric Cohn. Goes right side to Miles Johnson. Johnson trying to drive in. Right post, can't find anything. Puts it back up top of the key to Barnheiser. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Goes to the right side. Screen, deep three by Barnheiser, and that one is good. Two deep threes from the same spot of the Homer Drew signature on the floor for Barnheiser, and it's now a 10-8 game. Valpo leading by two. Edwards with the ball, top of the post. Looks down to Kithier. Nothing and rebounded by McLaughlin. Johnson tries to fake a shot down low. Good pass by Pennington. Just touched the last by Valpo. 
And then talks last to go out of bounds by McLaughlin. The Beacons will take over here with the basketball. Kithier will take it out of bounds. A lot going on here in this game. A lot of fast big opportunities. There'll be a lot to talk about, of course. Darius Yavero bringing the ball down the floor here. Goes right side to Trey Woodyard. Woodyard looks back up to Young. Young will try to take it. Left post block. Can't find anything back up top. Key Woodyard. Diavero tries to do something with the ball. Tries to put up a shot and gets blocked and out of bounds by Miles Johnson. 14 seconds remaining on the shot clock here for the Beacons. Diavero will take the ball out of bounds. Tosses into Kithier. Kithier hands out to Sheldon Edwards at the free throw line. Misses no good. Rebound again by Miles Johnson. Johnson so far with three rebounds in this game. Ball stolen by Diavero. Pass to Sheldon Edwards. He drives into the lane. Right hand layup doesn't make it, but he will go to the line for two as it's a foul on Trinity Christian. This will be their second overall team foul. First on number 24, Miles Johnson. And Sheldon Edwards will take two at the line. So far, he's been 72.7% precisely from the free throw mark. Misses his first on that one. The West Palm Beach native sports management major actually took a lot of time in 2019. Watch Valpo basketball over everything. He even said 75, precisely 75% of the time. It's about his free throw percentage as well as he misses both at the charity stripe. And Trinity Christian will rebound that one. James Pennington will cross the timeline, guarded and pressured by Edwards. Now changes it, tries the alley-oop, no good. Tries to get it to Miles Johnson, just not high enough. Johnson going too early on the alley-oop. Left corner for one year, taken in by Crick. He tries to bring it down low and gets fouled, and will go to the charity stripe for two. He'll be on Braxton Barnheiser. That's his first foul of the game. And Trinity Christian's third foul. Ben Crickey will go to the line for two. Makes the first one. Brings it now to a three-point game. Falpo is over the last six down low and actually one of their last eight. As Crickey puts two points on the board as he makes both. That also bring up his free throw percentage as it was 71% coming into this contest. Johnson will bring the ball, hands it off to Pennington on the left side. Tries left block, takes a floater up, misses, tries to do the same thing he did on the last three plays ago. Rebound by Young. Diavero will try to take it down, passes a crookie, top of the three point key, misses his pass down low to Young, hits the backboard and rebounded by Trinity Christian. Three point attempt there coming from Eric Cohn, missed. And a rebound by the Beacons. Young will try to drive. Passes left side to Edwards. Edwards will pass up. Gets screened by Crickey. Tries to go down low. No one there. Try to pass to pretty much no one on that play. Thought Crickey was going to screen and roll down. Did not. Pass left side. Three-point shot by Pennington is no good. Diavero for the Beacons will rebound. He'll drive down. Take a right-hand leg. Gets blocked by Eric Cohn. But it will be Beacon basketball underneath the basket. Lots of action for both of these teams. And we're seeing Diavero. Man, he's a quick guard for this Beacon squad. Just continues to drive up and back the floor just about every single play. We're seeing him. Passes in right side to Edwards. Gets it to Crickey. Takes the shot at the Valley logo, and it's in. 14, 8, 12, 30 remaining in the first half. James Pennington drives right side. Passes. Tries to get it to the left corner to Miles Johnson. Touch out of bounds by Trey Woodyard of Valpo. Pennington fell down on that last play as he was driving to the basket. Didn't see an open, excuse me, didn't see an open lane. Try to get that ball out. 20 seconds still on the shot clock for the Trolls. Johnson with the ball here. Tries to take up a left-hand layup and a foul called underneath. It'll be the first Beacons foul will be on number 33, Trey Woodyard. And, of course, that'll be his first foul. Trinity Christian will take the ball out of bounds here. They'll see how they set it up. Hands it off to Barnheiser as he passes it into Cone. Gets it to Pennington, left side for Eric Cone. Gets it back to Barnheiser, another deep three for Barnheiser, and it's good. 
Braxton Barnheiser playing one heck of a game here. Has nine points on three-point attempts. Hands it off to Woodyard. Sheldon Edwards gets the ball here. Passes down low to Cricky. Cricky puts up two points on the board. Goes right over McLaughlin under the basket down low. 16-11 Valpo lead. McLaughlin will bring one down right on top of Cricky. Just a revenge move right back from Trinity Christian. D'Avero gets it to Young. DeAndre Young passes to Ben Cricky. Top of the key. Cricky with a spin move. Drives down low. Left hand layup and he scores. Good move by Ben Cricky. 18-13. Valpo leads by five. And an easy look for Braxton Bornheiser. Miles Johnson finding him down low. Wide open underneath the lower circle. D'Avero will take the ball here. Hands it off to Sheldon Edwards. Woodyard handing it back to Edwards. Edwards getting it down low. Right block for Ben Cricky. Double team. Throws up a floater and scores once again. Ben Cricky, man, he's got 12 points in this game. 5 of 7 and 2 of 2 from the free throw line as well. 10 minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the first half. McLaughlin will hand it up to Barnheiser. Barnheiser right side by the Homer Drew logo. Gets it back off to McLaughlin. He's double team. He puts it up on the board and scores. Good defense by Valpo, but an even better shot by McLaughlin. Cricky down low, quick tempo offense, scores with another floater. Ben Cricky, my gosh, 14 points in this game. He's finding his own element here quickly in the arc. James Pennington gets double teamed by Edwards and Diavero. Ball stolen by Sheldon Edwards. Pass to Cricky. He'll drive down in the slam by Ben Cricky. What a play by Sheldon Edwards to Cricky. And now we're at the 10-minute mark. James Pennington, ball top of the key. Gets it to Deion McLaughlin. McLaughlin, good move here. Tries to fake out Cricky. Stolen by Cricky. And pass to Diavero. Darius Diavero gets it to Sheldon Edwards. Right side, 4-3, wide open. It's good. 27-17, Valpo leading by 10 here as we're just under the 10-minute mark. Deion McLaughlin with the ball on the left side. You can hear Jason Hawkins for the trolls on the right side of the floor here. Calling out plays to his players. Gets that ball to Pennington on the left side. Goes right side to Barnheiser. Barnheiser bounce passes over to Miles Johnson in the right corner. Johnson driving down to the right block. Tries to take up a shot. Gets blocked by Trey Woodyard. But they're going to call a foul on Woodyard down low. That'll be a second foul of this game. And that brings us to our second media timeout in this game. We'll be right back here in just 60 seconds here in the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Valpo 27, Trinity Christian 17. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets to the best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of bowl season. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. When it comes to keeping your family healthy, annual wellness visits with a health care provider are key. Routine exams and screenings can identify potential health issues early when they are most treatable. And Northwest Medical Group has implemented strict safety standards so that you can come to us confidently, knowing we are providing a safe place with quality care. We are committed to helping you stay well, and we offer both telehealth and in-person visits. Schedule an appointment today at MyCareNorthwestHealth.com. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURTheSource.com, you're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. And we are back here in the arc in a good game here. Hey, Valpo Sports fans, Lincoln Center Grill and Pub, located at 501 North Stillhaven and East Chicago Street, has one special featuring wings, burgers, wraps, rib tips, and more at amazing lunch prices. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Stop by and visit them today. Get dine in. Order online at 2go.wingsect.com. Wings, etc. Grill and Pub in Valparaiso. 
man, we're seeing a Valparaiso team just dominate here over the last minute and 16 seconds as they're on a 7-0 run, 7 of their last 7. But at the same time, Trinity Christian continues to battle back. They're fourth their last four on field goal attempts, and they will also start here at the line after our media timeout. 27-17, 9 minutes, 14 seconds left to go here in this first half. I'm Zach Collins, and you're listening here to the Valpo Sports Radio Network, of course, here on WVUR. Trinity Christian will go to the line to take two free throw attempts after a foul called on Trey Woodyard. Personally, not the best foul call underneath. It was a clean block, but regardless, can't argue with the officials. Number 24, Miles Johnson, the 73% field free throw shooter, will go to the line. He'll miss his first. He'll attempt his second here. Johnson out of Indianapolis, Indiana. He's actually one of few natives homeschooled and one of the only on the Trinity Christian team as he makes his second basket. Anderson will check back into the game as he brings the ball down the timeline here. Gets that ball on the right corner to Taylor. Kithier driving in and slams it in. Miles Johnson trying to defend Kithier down low. Kithier just blows it in. Brings Valpo 29-18. 11 point lead here in this first half. Connor Barrett also seeing his first appearance here in this game. Most of the starters back in, except for Connor Barrett. He did not start in this contest, seeing his first few minutes here. Bennington will try to go to Clark. Clark gets it back out top of the key to Eric Cohn. Cohn gets it right side to Jalen Clark. Jalen Clark drives in a top of the basket shot. Hits a shot clock as he has a very high arc on that shot. Try to float it in, but, man, you can only float it in so much. Shot clock violation will be called on Trinity Christian, and Valpo will take possession. Trevor Anderson bringing the ball down the right side, gets it to Kithier. Goes left side to Connor Barrett. Anderson trying to drive down low, easy through the lane, and scores a two. Good job by Trevor Anderson. He's been able to find the lane so far here in this game. We'll see if he continues to. Miss bobble by Miles Johnson. Stolen by Aaron Gordon. And out on the left side to Connor Barrett. That three-point shot is no good. Barnheiser will rebound. Good pressure here on Aaron Gordon on Barnheiser. Able to get it to Jalen Clark on the right side. Clark getting it to Johnson. In the right corner, Johnson trying to drive down low. Right block goes back up to the right post. Goes down low. Left-hand layup doesn't make it. Rebound by Taylor. And up to Anderson. Anderson will throw it down the floor to Connor Barrett. 4-3 in the left corner. It's no good. Rebound by James Pennington. 31-18. 7 minutes, 30 seconds. Pennington throws the ball up. Doesn't even touch rim. And rebounded, I guess, if you'd like to say, by Anderson. It would be a shot attempt on Pennington. Left side to Barrett. Kith here at the top of the key. Gives it to Aaron Gordon on the right side. It's going to be a foul on Jalen Clark. Looks to be a reach in there as he tried to get that ball from Aaron Gordon, which will also bring us to a media timeout. Valpo 31, Trinity Christian 18. We'll be back here in 60 seconds. You're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Wings, etc. We love sports so much that we pack our walls with tons of big flat screens tuned to the very best sports programming. At Wings, etc. We love big, cooked to tender, crisp perfection. Wings, and so do our fans who voted our wings best in more and more cities across the Midwest. At Wings, etc. We love beer. We love it so much that we have over 40 different kinds of beers and bottles and on tap, including your favorite regional craft beers. Wings, etc. At 501 North Zone 80 in Valparaiso and online at wingsetc.com. It takes courage to face up to things like volatile markets and Wall Street money traps. If you're unsure, worried, or losing sleep about your money, do something about it. Call Joe Murphy and the team at Murphy Wealth Management, proudly serving the Chicago land and Northwest Indiana communities at 800 930 5905. Again, call 800 930 5905. Live on WUR 95.1 and streaming at WURthesource.com. You're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. 
No matter the job at hand, Kastonia Tractor has John Deere equipment with the power to take it on. Whether you're mowing your lawn, hauling material, or baling hay, Kastonia Tractor has mowers, tractors, and implements you need. Find a location near you at castrack.com. We're back here in the Athletics Recreational Center for a non-conference matchup between the Valparaiso Beacons and the Trinity Christian Trolls. I'm Zach Collins, double leading in this contest, 31 to 18, 7 minutes, 11 seconds. Remaining here in this first half, and we've seen Valpo dominating over the last three minutes. They're on an 11-in-1 run over this Trolls team. At one point, it was a two-point game. Now Valpo seeming to bring things out here. In this game against the Trolls, are nine of their last 11. Trinity Christian hasn't scored in the last two minutes. Valpo will take the ball out of bounds here on the right side. Anderson just about right near the Homer Drew logo. That's in between the timeline and the baseline. We'll see what kind of play set up here. Gets it into Kithier right away. Hands it off to Anderson. Anderson will go to the left side. Hands it off to Barrett. And the left side, three-pointer, no good. Connor Barrett just not able to knock anything down here. All three from the three-point mark. Two of those taken on the left side. Eric Cohn goes to the top of the key. Tries to hand off to Barnheiser. Cohn will try to drive down low. Good defense by Anderson. Cohn able to reverse lay it in. Anderson not seeing him go right past him on that one. Anderson hands it off to Kevion Taylor. Taylor goes right side to Barrett. Barrett tries to find anything can't goes to Taylor hands back off to Anderson top of the key tries to get down low on the right block Kevin Taylor excuse me Thomas Kithier throws that out of bounds to Aaron Gordon and it will be out of bounds on the beacons no one touched it on Trinity Christian just try to go cross court on that one Eric Cohn will pass it in to Miles Johnson Johnson coming up the left side pass it to Brady LaRue his first playing here of the game. Goes right side, tries to get to Jalen Clark as he's on the right side. Bounce pass down low. Man, Brady LaRue just trying to get that one. Just too much momentum. Falls down, goes out of bounds. Good defense by the Beacons. And Doppel will take over the possession with just six minutes remaining here in this first half. Anderson goes to the right side. Comes top of the key. Passes left to Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon at the free throw mark. Gets the top of the key to Anderson once again. Anderson trying to find an open lane. Goes with the left hand layup with the right hand and scores. Goes to the left side. Uses the right hand and the left hand layup. Don't see that very often, but he had an easy floater in there. 33-20 Valpo lead. Top of the key is Braxton Barnheiser. Goes right side to Jalen Clark. Jalen Clark trying to find anything inside. Kent goes back top of the key to Eric Cohn. Eric Cohn, jump stop, throws up a floater, no good, but is fouled on the shot. Looks to be on the shot, doesn't look to be on the floor. That will be on Thomas Kithier. That will be his first foul and Valpo's third. Eric Cohn shooting 75% from the charity stripe as he makes his first. The Elmhurst, Illinois native played at York High School. His brother, David, actually plays professional basketball in Israel. Man, that's quite a drive, I'll tell you that much, as he makes both. Well, you can't really drive there, but kind of a flight as well. Doppel takes over possession here. Left side, Sheldon Edwards. Passes right side to Trevor Anderson, top of the key now. Anderson looks to Aaron Gordon on the right side. Thomas Kithier trying to look on the right block. Can't get anything. Passes back up to Kevin Taylor. Misses the three-point attempt. And there will be an offensive foul on Thomas Kithier. Two quick fouls here for Thomas Kithier that will bring in the sub, Ben Cricky. Just trying to be aggressive down low, but sometimes you can be a little too aggressive in a game. Try to go for that ball. Just could not get it. Trinity Christian will bring the ball down the floor here. Jalen Clark with the ball. Goes left side of the three-point arc. Tries to drive. Left-hand layup. No good. Rebound by Edwards. Sheldon Edwards. Good ball movement here. Gets to Anderson. Right side. Three-pointer. It's good. 
Trevor Anderson with a beautiful three-point shot, 36-22. Valpo leading in this game. Great fake by Miles Johnson. Faked out Sheldon Edwards, but he misses the three. Rebound by Aaron Gordon. Anderson with the ball here. Hands it to Kevion Taylor for another three-pointer. It's good. Kevion Taylor with a three-point bucket. That'll put him at five points so far here in this contest. Trinity Christians, Eric Cohn on the right corner. Passes up to the right side of three-point arc. Then gets that ball to Braxton Barnheiser. Barnheiser trying to move the ball here. No one getting open here for the Trolls. Barnheiser forced to bring it down low. Gets it stolen and swept up by Kevion Taylor. Anderson goes down low. Kevion Taylor passing that ball backwards. And Ben Crookie going up for the shot. An official calls that no good. Will be a foul on the floor. I believe that foul was on Brady Lurup, and it will be, that will be his first, Trinity Christian's fifth. Four minutes, two seconds remaining. Valpo will take it out of bounds here on the left side. And there will be a full timeout called by Jason Hawkins of the Trinity Christian Trolls, which will put us at a media timeout. Valpo 39, Trinity Christian 22. We'll be back here in 60 seconds here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Do you hear that? That's the sound of Hungry House hot, real mozzarella cheese melting over a bed of dough made fresh today. And flavored crusts loaded with any combination of our mouth-watering flavored crust flavors. You probably didn't think irresistible had a sound. Well, it does now. Now get a meal deal for any budget starting at the irresistible price of just $5.99. Over any other orthopedic practice in the region, Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute offers the specialized bone, joint, and muscle care needed to keep you in motion. Our world class providers serve as the official team physician for Valparaiso University, and we have proudly delivered specialized, experienced care throughout Northwest Indiana for more than 50 years. To learn more about Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute, visit lbji.com. Live on WVR 95.1 and streaming at WVRTheSource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. And we are back here in the Arc of Alpo 39, Trinity Christian 22. Arch Madness tipped off March 3rd through the 6th in St. Louis, Missouri. And NBC Fan Hangout at Ballpark Village is the best place to celebrate before and after games. Visit the NBC Fan Hangout to enjoy Ballpark Village restaurants, entertainment, and everything Arch Madness. For more information, visit archmadness.com and click on Fan Hangout. Arch Madness, what a great time that is. Hopefully, we'll be able to have that this year. And, of course, we'd love to have you here at Arch Madness. Valpo currently leading in this game on a 6-0 run. Trinity Christian has had no field goals in the past two minutes and 43 seconds. So far, we're seeing the likes of Ben Crickey and Trevor Anderson. Crickey with 16, Anderson with 11. On the other side, we're seeing Braxton Barnheiser. He's got 11 points as well in this game, going 4 of 5 for the Trinity Christian Trolls. Hasn't missed a three-point basket yet. Valpo will take the ball out of bounds. Trevor Anderson tried to find anybody. Goes up high to Aaron Gordon, almost intercepted by Eric Cohn. Ben Crickey able to take possession of that. Gordon goes right corner to Sheldon Edwards. Screen by Crickey. Passes to Edwards. Left side to to me. Left side is giving on Taylor. Trevor Anderson getting that ball. Now passes on the right side corner to Sheldon Edwards. Misses the three. There's just one second left on the shot clock. Rebound by Trinity Christian. Miles Johnson with the ball. Spin move at the top and he makes it in. Good move by Miles Johnson. Banks that one in off a floater. 39-24 Valpo lead. Pass down low to Ben Crickey. Left hand floater scores. Goes right over the defender, Miles Johnson. Cricky standing a little bit taller than Miles Johnson. Johnson at 6'6, six, six, Ben Cricky at 6'9. Trinity Christian tries to bring the ball down the floor, stolen by Valpo. Sheldon Edwards tries to bring the ball up, gets fouled on the lane as he tried to go up for the right hand layup. 
Foul is going to be on Braxton Barnheiser. That'll be his second, team six. And Sheldon Edwards will go to the line for two. Edwards so far, we're seeing a lot of potential out of Sheldon Edwards as he makes that first one. Normally not starting in the last three games for this Beacons team. Thoughtful putting the reset on the players on the floor. Bringing Darius Diavero, Keandre Young, and Trey Woodyard, as well as we're seeing the likes of the junior, number 32, Joe Hedstrom. Sheldon Edwards makes them both and puts in Connor Barrett as he was waiting for the sophomore to make both free throw attempts. 43-24, three minutes remaining here in this first half. Trinity Christian will bring the ball down the floor. James Pennington on the left side, goes top the key, tries to hand it off, can't, gets it right side, Jalen Clark, 4-3, air balls it, rebound by Joe Hedstrom. Darius Diavero brings the ball left side, goes top the key to Hedstrom, back left side to Diavero. Diavero tries to drive up, and it looks like the officials are going to call a jump ball. He went up. Trinity Christian had a hand on the ball. Trinity Christian has the possession arrow anyway and will gain possession. 43 24, 242 remaining. Honestly, it was a surprise the officials did call it. Trinity Christian already had the ball, but otherwise, a very good call by the officials here. Valpo does get the possession arrow with the last two minutes, 30 seconds here, the first half. James Pennington passes right side. Jalen Clark at the Homer Drew logo. Clark looks for Pennington, right corner. Pennington, as he was going out of bounds, jumped, got it off the right leg of Connor Barrett. That ball will fall out of bounds. Trinity Christian will take possession with 20 seconds on the shot clock at the B-E of the Beacon logo down low. Pennington with the ball right side, tries to drive to the right block, and goes back up, jumps to the post, the floater, it's good. 43-26, Valpo lead. Diavero hands it to Hedstrom. Hedstrom goes left side to Keandre Young. Keandre Long loses the ball here. Connor Barrett trying to drive underneath, and he's able to get the jump ball called. Valpo has the possession going their way. They'll maintain possession with 20 seconds on the shot clock. Officials talking it over where they're going to take it out of bounds. It was kind of just right in the middle of the Valley logo in the paint, so they couldn't really decide on exactly where that ball would be taken. They're going to take it on the right side underneath the basket. Diavera will take it out of bounds. Those is Connor Barra. Left side, three-pointer, no good in the left corner again. Valpo does rebound. Good job by Trey Woodyard. Hands it off to Keandre Young. Left side, Barrett drives in, tries to get a basket, gets fouled as he goes up, and he will go to the line for two. These will be Connor Barrett's first attempts at the line as he hasn't taken one from the charity stripe so far this season. He will shoot two, so we really can't tell you what he's been shooting so far in the season because he hasn't taken anything so far. It was a good drive. It's good that he didn't take a three-point attempt again. He's 0-4 from the three so far. We'll see if he gets his first ball in the bucket here, and he does. Now 1-1 one one on the season. Connor Barrett played a lot last year, suffered last year from an ankle injury, which put him a little bit slower this season. We're not seeing as quick of a Connor Barrett as we did last season as he makes both and puts Valpo at a good advantage here by 19. One minute, 50 seconds remaining in the first half. James Pennington goes right side of Miles Johnson. Johnson back up top of the key to Jalen Clark. Jalen Clark trying to look for James Pennington, left top of the key, goes down, rolls to the block, takes a floater, no good, and it's going to be out of bounds on Emmanuel Jones of Trinity Christian. One minute, 35 seconds remaining in this first half. Trey Woodyard takes out of bounds, gets it to Diavario. Diavario taking it, handing it off to Woodyard, handing it back off to Keandre Young, top of the key, right side Diavero. Diavero trying to look, gets touched by James Pennington. That ball is going to be out of bounds on Trinity Christian, 17 seconds still on the shot clock for the Beacons. And a timeout will be taken by Matt Lodick here. It will be a 30 second timeout, so we will stay here with you. Let's go over some of the stats so far that we've seen in this game. Some team highs overall. We're seeing Braxton Barnheiser for Trinity Christian with 11 points. 
in a rebound category. Miles Johnson leading there with three rebounds. And in terms of assists, we're seeing two so far from Eric Cohn. For the Beacons, leading in points is number 23, Ben Crick. He's got 18 points in this game. Thomas Kithy with three rebounds. And Sheldon Edwards with four assists so far in this contest. So we're seeing a lot of action out of both of these teams so far. But Valpo, just a lot of fast break opportunities. They're not missing too many of their shots. Unless it's from the three-point left corner of Connor Barrett. That's just about all we've seen in terms of really tons of missed shots so far. But at the same time, you want to get Barrett off that ankle injury. You want to get him in more games as Valpo will take the ball out of bounds. See Averio will pass that ball left side to Barrett. Goes back up top of the key to Woodyard. Kendra Young drives down low. Right hand misses, gets fouled as he drives up and will go to the line for two. This will also be Kendra Young's first attempt at the charity stripe as he has not shot anything so far from the free throw mark. Keandre Young, the Dell City, Oklahoma native out of Dell City High. Young will miss the first. He will take the second here. Rims around, misses that one as well as he goes over two from the charity strike. Trinity Christian will take over here with just a minute left in the first half. Miles Johnson will go right side. Offensive foul called on Trinity Christian. Man, what an offensive foul just pushed in. That will be on number 31, Emmanuel Jones. That will be his first foul in Trinity's ninth in the game. It will be an offensive foul, so Vopel will take the ball here. Edstrom goes left side, passes to Barrett. Barrett to Diaverio. On the outside of Trey Woodyard, he misses that one. It will win on the foot of James Pennington underneath the basket. Looks like he had an easy rebound, just going too quick on that one. Goes off his foot and lands out of bounds. Falco hasn't made a field goal in the last two minutes and 32 seconds. Just 48 seconds here remaining in this first half. Diaverio will take the ball out of bounds. Goes up top of the O, the Valpo logo to Keandre Young. He's top of the key. Goes left side, finds Barrett. Barrett goes back up, top of the key to Woodyard. Right side, Diaverio. Diaverio at the free throw line, tries to go down low. And he will find Joe Hedstrom for two. 30 seconds remaining. First points of this contest for Joe Hedstrom. A 47-26 beacon lead. Johnson on the right side, tries to get to Pennington. Shot clock and game clock are separated by just a second. Ball will go out of bounds. Will be last touched by Keandre Young. Matt Lonick not happy with the call, but has to accept it anyway. Trinity Christian just separated by one second of the shot clock and the game clock of 14 seconds and 15 for the game. Braxton Barnheiser taking it out on the far side of the floor. Gets it in James Pennington, right corner, far corner. Tries to go cross court. Eric Cohn goes to Clark. Top of the key for Johnson. He takes a three, and it's no good. Rims out. Rebound by Diaverio. One second left. Keandre Young gets blocked on the three-point attempt. No foul called. Possibly thought a foul, but no foul regardless. As Valpo will head to the locker room, of course, very happy after that first half performance. 47-26. Valpo leads here in this game. We'll be back here after this break to run you down some of the stats of the first half of this contest and some of my opinions about the early portions of this game. So we'll be back in two minutes here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. There's no need to fear. The First Source Bank mobile app is here. As fast as a mobile deposit. Built to pay bills instantaneously. Powered to balance budgets. And with a simple tap, a call is placed for that personal touch. There are sports bars everywhere these days, but there's only one place for award-winning Jumbo Wings, bigger beers, and better food and drink values all week long. Wings Etc. Grill and Pub. We're so much more than wings. Enjoy wraps, salads, subs, seafoods, pizza. Amazing appetizers and awesome daily lunch, food, and drink specials. And now, when you can't... 
can't eat here, order online for pickup at togo.wingsetc.com. It's fast, easy, and convenient. Wings and Center Grilling Pub at 501 North Zone 80 in Valparaiso and online at wingsetc.com. Minutes still matter when it comes to medical emergencies. Chest pain, severe abdominal pain, headache, high fever, and other emergencies need fast medical care. So please, don't put off getting care in an emergency. Northwest Health has implemented strict safety standards so that you can come to us confidently, knowing we are providing a safe place with quality care. Visit NorthwestHealthERCare.com or call 911 in an emergency. Prefer four to one over any other orthopedic practice in the region. Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute offers the specialized bone, joint, and muscle care needed to keep you in motion. Our world-class providers serve as the official team physicians for Valparaiso University, and we have proudly delivered specialized, experienced care throughout Northwest Indiana for more than fifty years. To learn more about Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute, visit lbji.com. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com. You're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Hey fans, the 2022 State Farm FEC Men's Basketball Tournament tips off at Enterprise Center March 3rd through the 6th. Purchase your all-season tickets to Arch Madness and save $20 just by calling 219 219- Four six four five two three three, or even easier, order online at valpoathletics.com. Get your tickets today and experience the madness. We're going to get into our halftime show as it's halftime. Valpo forty-seven, Trinity Christian twenty-six. I'm Zach Collins bringing you our halftime show, which is brought to you by IBEW and the Powering America team of Northwest Indiana. Man, so far we're seeing. Valpo on a lot of fast break opportunities. We're seeing the subs get into the game. It's been great here so far for Valparaiso. So we'll break down some of the stats for the Beacons after we look at Trinity Christian. So far, they're shooting 10 of 25 from the field goal percentage at 40% overall, 3 of 9 from the three-point line, and 3 of 4 from the charity stripe. Valpo 18 of 36, shooting perfect 50%. And as well as from the three-point line, 3 of 13, only 23% for the Beacons. A lot of those taken by Connor Baird as he's at 4 of the 13, and they're 8 of 12 from the Charity Stripe, 66.7%, but a lot of guys who haven't been to the Charity Stripe visiting there today, so not able to really focus on that as much as trying to find their own and their own element. Looking at Trinity Christian so far, we're seeing James Pennington not do so much as we thought we would in this game. He's only got four points, three turnovers overall, and only one rebound. Then we're looking, especially at Braxton Barnheiser. I mean, he's just been excellent in this contest so far. Excellent on defense, even better on offense. Leading the team with 11 points, one assist, one turnover, and one steal, as well as three rebounds on the defensive end. Then we're seeing a finish off of Eric Cohn with four points, DM McLaughlin with four points, and Miles Johnson with three. Vince Overway, Jalen Clark, Brady LaRoupe, and Emmanuel Jones all seeing time in this contest, but not scoring overall. Looking for your beacons, we're seeing a lot of great things out of Ben Cricky. 18 points, he's got two rebounds, three steals, and one turnover in this contest followed down by Trevor Anderson with 11 points and two assists. And so far we're seeing a lot out of both of those good key players. He's also got two steals as well in this contest. Looking at some of the other players on the floor for Valpo, we have Kevion Taylor with five points. Sheldon Edwards with five points as well. Expected to see a little bit more out of him today. Haven't seen much of the floor appearance for Sheldon Edwards in this contest. Probably trying to get a few other guys in here rather than Edwards to give Edwards a break after visiting the Bahamas just this last week. A couple of other players as well finishing things out for the weekends is Connor Barrett with two points and Joe Hedstrom with two points as well in this game. Trey Woodyard as well as DeAndre, DeAndre Young and Darius D'Avero, as well as Aaron Gordon, seeing time but not scoring in this contest. 
Looking at the points and the turnovers, Valpo's had 15 turnovers versus Trinity Christian, five. So we're seeing a lot of turnovers from this Valpo team, and they're able to get a lot of them off this Trinity Christian offense. Points in the bank, Valpo's got 30, Trinity Christian with just 10. Trinity forced to take a lot of three-point attempts, but not too many overall. They're just missing a lot of their two-point shots. They're not driving to the paint very much. A lot of floating shots seen from this Trolls team. Second chance points, Valpo with eight. Trinity Christian with zero. Fast breaks, Valpo, here's the key of the game right now. Valpo with 15 fast breaks, Trinity Christian with zero. They have zero fast breaks in terms of the offensive side, so we're seeing they're not getting too many rebounds in this contest. I mean, overall, you got to look at the rebounds. They have 11. Valpo's got to double that 22. So, seen a lot more of that rhythm from Valpo. We're seeing a better defensive presence from Valpo rather than Trinity Christian. That's what leads to fast break opportunities, people, and that's why Valpo's 15-0 in terms of fast breaks. And in bench points, Valpo with just nine bench points, playing a lot of their bench players, though, and Trinity Christian with just four in this contest. We're hoping to see a lot more contribution from Valpo's bench here coming in this second half. Looking at the first period scoring, it was 47-26, of course, and that leaves you here in halftime. We'll be back to talk about a few things. We're also going to talk about Trinity Christians coach Jason Hawkins as well and the Valpo connection that he has here right after this two-minute timeout here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. You work hard for your money. We know you do. With that same work ethic, Allegis Credit Union has been serving the very same hard-working Northwest Indiana community residents for over 50 years. There is no better place to go for your financial needs, such as new and used vehicle loans, personal loans, Visa credit cards, and home equity loans. We are here to help you get that loan you deserve. Make it easy by simply applying for your loan online at Allegis.org or stop into the Allegis office nearest you. Not only can Allegis offer affordable payments, but also extra benefits, such as a fast application process and no payments for 90 days. Come to a place where we take care of hardworking community people like you. Visit Allegis.org for more information today. That is Allegis.org. Contact Allegis for more information on the 90 day no payment option for membership required for loan disbursement. Ticket Smarter is glad we are back to holding live events. If you are looking to buy tickets and best sports, concerts, and theater events, all at the very best price, look no further than TicketSmarter.com or on the app. Buying tickets at Ticket Smarter will help support children in need. For every ticket transaction on Ticket Smarter, one dollar will be donated to a children's charity. Ticket Smarter is proud to be the official ticketing partner of Bowl Season. Ticket Smarter, a smarter way to buy tickets. One meal everyone in your family can get on board with, it's Culver's. You may know us for our famous Cutter Burgers, cooked to order for that great signature steak taste, but we're also known for our whole white meat chicken cutters and juicy chicken sandwiches, and our melty with cheese curds, and our peanut butter burgers. For Culver's, we believe more than you are, as we know we are the great meal Welcome to Culver's. Live on WVUR 95.3, streaming at WVURthesource.com, you're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. And welcome back to IBEW, Powering American Team of Northwest Indiana Halftime Show. Here, Valpo is leading 47-26 to 26 over Trinity Christian. I'm Zach Collins, and let's talk about Jason Hawkins, the Trinity Christian head coach. And he's actually has a couple of Valparaiso connections. He played here at this arena, not on this floor as we have a new floor this season, but in this arena he played from 2000 to 2003, winning both conference titles in each of those years. And he also was a part of the team that reached the NCAA tournament in 2002 and the team that reached the NIT in 2003 and received his undergraduate degree here from Valparaiso as well in 2003. He also has a lot of other connections. He was a Valparaiso University assistant coach for two seasons. He actually was with Luke Gore, who we talked to earlier in our pregame show, the associate head coach of the Beacons. He was with him for a few seasons, the coaching staff, which is great to see. 
And he's also, he was also the former athletic director at Lake Station in 2015. He was also, a couple of other things, he returned to Valpo with the 2006 coach for a couple seasons here as well. And a deep history of coaching. He's an athletic director at Lake Station. He was also the assistant athletic director at Marquette Catholic High School in Michigan City, Indiana. Marquette Catholic, known for a lot of state teams in terms of volleyball, in terms of basketball. Marquette Catholic has a deep history in being very good and known throughout this region. And even Rene Turpa from the region is a pretty associate with Marquette Catholic High School, if you didn't know that one as well. He went on to coach at IU Northwest from 2011 to 2014. So we're seeing a lot out of this man here. We're seeing a lot out of Jason Hawkins. He's, just, he's been just about everywhere. Another interesting thing about him, too, is a Gary, Indiana native. Gary, Indiana, just about 30 minutes out of Valparaiso, Indiana. So he's got deep connections and tied roots to this territory here of Northwest Indiana. I mean, He's a pretty good coach overall. I mean, his record doesn't show as well. He's 33-57 and 57 overall with the head coach of both Trinity Christian and IUNW, which is in Gary, Indiana as well. So, you know, he's a great guy. He's great to talk to. I was able to interview him in one of my first sideline appearances here in the ARC when I was a freshman. And, you know, just a great guy overall. Just the team isn't bonding here as well as they want to tonight. They still have not come out of the locker room as well as there's only about two minutes and 30 seconds left of this halftime period. A couple of interesting series notes as well. Valpo has not lost to Trinity Christian yet as playing them early in the Bryce and Drew era. The last year Bryce Drew was here, they actually played Trinity Christian in the first game. That's when Valpo went 30-7 and seven overall under Bryce Drew. Bryce Drew then going to Vanderbilt, now at Grand Canyon University. They actually made the tournament last season and are looking to make the tournament once again here with Bryce Drew. Valpo overall was picked seventh to finish here in the Valley. And at the same time, Valpo just playing excellent basketball over Trinity Christian. Their first meeting, 89-42 win over Trinity Christian was the biggest margin that Valpo had won up against the Trolls. The closest one ever came for these two teams was the 2016 matchup, which was just a 14-point win for the Beacons. And, man, what a team this team has really come out to be for Valpo. They're starting to play some fairly good basketball here. And Valpo, coming into this game, was predicted, and I'm not joking when I say this, 98.9% chance to win this game. Trinity Christian just a 1.1. So, if you bet Valpo in this game, I think you're going to take the cake there and that one. We'll return here in a minute and 30 seconds. That's 90 seconds here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network to get you ready for the start of the second half. Again, Valpo 47, Trinity Christian 26. We'll be back here in 90 seconds here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Imagine this. Golden crispy fries with just the right amount of salt. Dip in your favorite sauce. You're thinking about McDonald's, aren't you? Make your McDonald's fried dreams reality. Pair them with your favorite sandwich for just $3. Choose a bacon cheeseburger, McDouble, a high and spicy mix dip. Add any side of soft drink for a dollar. Or a medium frozen Coke beverage for one sixty nine. Only at McDonald's. Yo, yo, this, hey, you, don't do it. Don't take that job when you can have a career. I'd love a career, but where? At First Source Bank, we offer a variety of fulfilling career opportunities, schedule flexibility, good pay and benefits, educational opportunities for personal growth, and a chance to work with amazing people just like yourself. Join us. Learn more at firststores.com forward slash careers. That's the number one ststores.com. An equal opportunity employer. Male, female, disabled, veteran. Minutes still matter when it comes to medical emergencies. Chest pain, severe abdominal pain, headache, high fever, and other emergencies need fast medical care. So please, don't put off getting care in an emergency. Northwest Health has implemented strict safety standards so that you can come to us confidently knowing we are providing a safe place with quality care. Visit NorthwestHealthERCare.com or call 911 in an emergency. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURTheSource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. 
And we are back in action here. We returned just a little bit late, 30 seconds in here in the second half. Doppel's Ben Crickey getting the first two points of the second half here. Driving down was number 32, Eric Coney got fouled underneath the basket. That will be on Aaron Gordon. That will be Gordon's first and Doppel's first of the half. Cohen will go to the line. He makes the first of two. Fans, the second half is underway, which means it's time to nominate and vote for the State Farm Performer of the Game. Please submit your nominations on social media by tweeting them to at Valpo Basketball. With surprisingly great rates, State Farm is the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Anderson bringing the ball down, right side, gets it to Thomas Kithier, left side to Aaron Gordon. Cricky drives down, left block, pushes in, double team, gets it back out to Gordon, top of the key to Kevin Taylor, 4-3, it's no good, bounces off the back of the rim, rebounded by Gordon, hands it off to Anderson, top of the key, three-pointer, it's good. Good shot there by Trevor Anderson, 52-28, brings Doppel up against Trinity Christian once again here in the second half. Braxton Barnheiser passes it right side to James Pennington. Goes top of the key to Cone. Eric Cone trying to find a lane. Can't find anything defended very well by Ben Crickey. Gets it to the left side to Vince Overway. Vince Overway, 4-3. It's good. Good three-pointer by Overway. First shot attempt of the game for Overway as well. And it's a three-pointer. First three points of the game here for Overway. Aaron Gordon with the three, puts it back. Answers back for Overway's three, and it's Aaron Gordon's first three points of the game as well. Overway to Pennington, time the key to Cone. Back to James Pennington. Pennington with a left-hand dribble, tries to go around the screen, no good. Aaron Gordon with defended, hands it to Braxton Barnheiser for a deep three-point basket. Wow. He's from the 10-foot volleyball line and makes that three-pointer. That's impressive stuff there. Ben Crickey, three-pointer, tries to answer back. No good. Try to rebound by Thomas Kithier and a horrific call by the official. Kithier having the ball. Threw it out of bounds literally with both of his hands. Trinity Christian not getting the call. Valpo somehow takes the ball. Thomas Kithier getting the ball inbounds here. Hands it off to Anderson. Anderson goes right side to Gordon. In the corner goes right block to Crickey. Crickey a little out of control. Throws up the floater with the left hand and scores. Man, what a call on that one. Raxon Barnheiser brings the ball across the timeline to Eric Cohn. Overweight, top of the key, goes left side. Tries to get it in the left corner to Cohn. And it's stolen by Aaron Gordon. Gordon gets it to Cricky on the right block. Cricky looking for Anderson, top of the key. Anderson looking back down low for Kithier. Kithier double team gets it to Anderson. Anderson driving, gets it to Kithier. Kithier to Cricky on the left side. Fakes a shot, goes up for two and scores. Good ball movement by the Beacons. 17 under here in this game. James Pennington right side for Trinity Christian. Good ball control gets it to Braxton Barnheiser, guarded very well by Aaron Gordon. Tight defense from this Beacons team. James Pennington trying to move the ball here. 14 on the shot clock, takes up a three, air balls it. Rebound by Aaron Gordon. Not a good shot, but you got 14 seconds left. Want to put that somewhere else. Ben Crickey drives down low, puts the left hand way up in, and scores. Ben Crickey, 26 points, foul on a 6 0 run which will lead to the first timeout of the second half, which will lead to our first media timeout. We'll be back here in 60 seconds. Valpo 61, Trinity Christian 34. March Madness is all about the excitement, the fans, the history, the big moment. It's all about the madness. It begins here. It's the 2022 State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Tournament, March 3rd to March 6th, presented by Valley Sports Indiana. Visit ArchMadness.com for ticket information. 
Bass Sports Bars everywhere these days. But there's only one place for award-winning Jumbo Wings, bigger beers, and better food and drink values all week long. Wings Etc. Grill and Pub. We're so much more than wings. Enjoy wraps, salads, subs, seafoods, quesadillas, amazing appetizers, and awesome daily once food and drink specials. And now, when you can't eat here, order online for pickup at to-go.wingsctc.com. It's fast, easy, and convenient. Wings Etc. Grill and Pub at 501 North Sylvania in Valparaiso. And online at wingsctc.com. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com. You're listening to the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Today's broadcast of Valpo Basketball is brought to you by Calumet Brewing and Bud Light. It's for the fans. Valpo's fans, pretty into this game and now starting to set down a little bit as the lead continues to increase for the Beacons as they're at a 61-34 point advantage over the Trinity Christian Trolls. I'm Zach Collins here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Valpo starting off this second half very well, very strong. They got a 6-0 run in the last minute, making pretty much just about every field goal that they take, just about every shot that they've been taking here so far. And, you know, Trinity Christian, their defense does need to step up if they do want to come back within this game. It's a bit tough game to come back within it, but hey, we've seen it before. We've seen it just about everywhere. Topo 61 34 over Trinity. 60 minutes and 19 seconds left here. Trinity Christian will take the ball out of bounds on their side of the defense floor here. It'll be on the near side. And it will be Vince Overway taking the ball out of bounds here for the Trolls. Overway will pass it into James Pennington. Pennington will cross the shield, the timeline. Defended by Kevion Taylor. Pennington going to the right side, dribbles over to the right corner, goes back up, goes left side to Overway. Overway hands it off to Eric Cohn, top of the key. Goes back to Miles Johnson on the right side, goes up 4 3 and drains it in. Right in the face of Trey Woodyard. 61 37, Valpo lead. Thomas Gither, the ball top of the key, goes right side to Anderson. Anderson to Woodyard, 4-3, rims out, no good. Trinity Christian able to get that rebound after Eric Cohn tapped it kind of over the rim there. Pennington able to get the rebound there. Cohn giving it to Overway, 4-3, and another three-point basket for Trinity Christian. It's now a 21-point lead for Valpo, but now a 6-0 run for the Trolls. Anderson, top of the key, hands it off to Kithier. Kithier dribbles, gets it to Anderson in the right corner. Anderson at the Valley logo, gets it down low on the right block to Kithier. Kithier goes up, gets his shot blocked by Miles Johnson. Gets it back out to Anderson for three, and it's good. Nice shot by Trevor Anderson. Anderson now with 17 points in this contest. 61-40, excuse me, 64-40 Valpo lead. Braxton Barnizer, top of the key, gets it down low. Back to Barnizer, blocked shot by Aaron Gordon. And another touch, and it will land a foul on Trinity Christians. Number 32, Eric Cohn with a reaching foul there. That will be his second of the game, as well as Trinity Christians first, which will bring us to a media timeout. We'll be back here in 60 seconds on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. I know you tire tire and lawn equipment is trying to exemplify the true meaning of the words trust, curtsy, and honesty. In fact, many of our customers say we've done a pretty good job of it. Since 1958, we've been providing auto repair and full service tire sales to Porter County, Indiana. Come visit us at our Valparaiso or La Crosse locations or check us out at HeinoCastFeller.com. We look forward to many more years of providing you excellent service. Visit our Heino and Feller, your family has to call. Whether it's buzzer beaters, it's going out for the buzzer, and we go to overtime. Big celebrations for an electric atmosphere. We've got it all in the valley. We've got some of the best. We mean the best. We mean basketball in the nation. In the postseason, we start here at Boots in the Heart. We'll see you in the Quad Cities. March 10th through 13th, presented by Grinnell Mutual Insurance. Visit NBCQuadCities.com for ticket information. Live 
on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com. You're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. We are back here, Valpo, with a big 24-point lead, 64-40 to 40 over Trinity Christian, 14 minutes and 44 seconds remaining here in this contest. I'm Zach Collins, and man, Valpo is playing some good basketball. Just look at the stats here. Trevor Anderson, so far in this game, just playing some lights-out basketball. 17 points, he's shooting 6 of 7. The only missed shot was a three-point attempt early in the game. And afterwards, he's just been hitting just about every shot he's taken. Ben Crickey with 26 points. He's 12 of 15 overall. He did take one three-point attempt, which adds to Ben Crick. He's barely any three-point attempts. He's now all four from the three-point mark. We're seeing a lot of good action out of a lot of these guys on this foul post side. Not seeing too much. Sheldon Edwards haven't seen him so far here in the second half as he does check in the game for his first court appearance of the second half. And Darius Diaverio as well with his first second half appearance. Valpo will be down low. They will be taking the ball out of bounds on the far side of the court. Right from the O of the Valpo shield as Diaverio will cross the timeline. Diaverio. Gets it down to Thomas Kith here on the left block. Drives in, gets it to Taylor on the top of the key. Taylor right side to Diaverio. Diaverio gets it to Trey Woodyard, hands it off to Taylor. Taylor goes, right side corner, Edwards. Four seconds on the shot clock. Diaverio has to drive in and a right hand layup and he scores. Nice attempt there by Diaverio. That's his first two points of the game. Now Trinity Christian's overway with the ball at the free throw line. Tries to go down low. Just a miscommunication by Braxton Barnheiser. Vince overway down low. Overway passing out of bounds and a sub coming in for Trinity Christian is number two, Jalen Clark. There is Ciavero. Brings the ball across the timeline. Gets it to Kithier. Get through, hands it off to Diavero, top of the key. Diavero tries to get Thomas Kithier down low. Somehow Kithier maintains possession there. Trey Warrior gets it to Diavero. Diavero for Edward. 4 3. It's good. Nice play by Sheldon Edwards and a good three point attempt. Puts up some of his first points of the second half. He's got eight so far in the game. Good defense by him as well in that last play. Thought he had a touch on that. Jalen Clark. Able to touch his hand as it went out of bounds. Braxton Barnheiser will take the ball out. Gets it into Miles Johnson. Johnson guarded by Taylor. Takes a shot. No good. Rebound by Edwards. Edwards with a quick tempo. Gets it to Thomas Kithier. Down low to Trey Woodyard. Fakes a shot up. Goes up and scores. Trey Woodyard with his first points of the game as well. Beacon 71, Trolls 40. Foul for the 31 point lead in this contest. And just a couple minutes ago, just a minute 30 seconds ago, it was a different kind of game. Braxton Barnheiser with another deep three on that one from the O of the Valpo logo. Misses that one. Diavero tries to drive down low, gets it to Trey Woodyard, floats it up, and it's good. And the whole Valpo bench is up for Trey Woodyard. Jalen Clark trying to drive. It will be an offensive foul that will land on Jalen Clark as he tried to drive into the basket. That does put in two Valpo subs, which will be Keandre Young and Joe Hedstrom for the Beacons. And Dean McLaughlin checking in for the Trolls. 12 minutes, 38 seconds, 73-40 Valpo advantage here. Guevara will slowly take it over the timeline here. Now, quick things up here. Goes right side. Passes to Hedstrom. An interesting pass coming from Diavero. Hedstrom was guarded by three different players down low in the inner circle. Eric Cohn, three-point shot, drains it. It's good. It seems that Trinity Christian, the thing that keeps them in this game is three-point shots so far here in this second half. They're eight of seven. It's shooting pretty well so far, 47% from the three-point mark. Diavero gets it to Keandre Young. 4-3, right side, it's good. 
Keandre Young with a beautiful shot there. That's Young's first three points of the game as well. Yeah, McLaughlin hands it off to Eric Cohn, gets it to Miles Johnson in the left corner. Johnson trying to drive in, gets to the left block, puts it back out to Barnheiser. Barnheiser trying to dribble in, goes down low to McLaughlin, tries to go up, and he scores. Good defense by the Beacons, even better move by McLaughlin down low. And oh my goodness, we see a Joe Edstrom three point attempt, and it's good. Wow, that's a rarity. Trinity Christian will take the ball over here. Good ball movement up top by the Trolls. Gets it down to Miles Johnson. Miles Johnson spin move. Goes back out. Good pass to McLaughlin. McLaughlin guarded by Edstrom. Tries to find anything. Looks like he double dribbled. No call. A foul underneath. And the basket will count. Wow. That's definitely a missed call there. Headstrom did not touch the ball at all. Missed call by the officials. And it will be a timeout coming here. We'll be back here in 60 seconds. Foul pole 79, Trinity Christian 47, here on the Vapo Sports Radio Network. Preferred 4 to 1 over any other orthopedic practice in the region, Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute offers the specialized bone, joint, and muscle care needed to keep you in motion. Our world class providers service the official team physicians for Valparaiso University. And we have proudly delivered specialized, experienced care throughout Northwest Indiana for more than 50 years. To learn more about Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute, visit lbji.com. When it comes to flavor, do you like to mix things up? Find a new match from time to time? For some people, there are too many flavors out there to stay loyal to just one. That's why Hungry Howie's created the Mix and Match menu. Any two items for only $5.99 each. So whether you're looking for a delicious time with pizza and a salad, or a sub and Howie bread, or a Pepsi four-pack and Howie cookie, we're not judging. In fact, we're encouraging, especially for just $5.99 each. Hungry Howie. Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. Larry's Discount Windows and more is a locally owned, family owned, and operated business which has served Northwest Indiana since 2003. Terry's has been voted Best Window Siding and Door Company by the Northwest Indiana Times for seven straight years. Call 219-476-0400 for Terry's Discount Windows. You'll be glad you called. Dompo here is answering the call for a win here at home, 79-47. to just 11 minutes remaining here in this game. Holy cow, we're just seeing a lot of Valpo basketball here in terms of scoring. Just take a look here at some of the stats overall. Every player who has played so far in this contest has scored at least a basket. We're seeing Ben Crickey with 26 points. Trevor Anderson with 17. We're seeing Taylor as well as Hedstrom with 5. Edwards with 8. Woodyard, Kithier with four, Gordon with three, Young with three, Diavera with two, and Barrett with two as well. Foul was last called on Valparaiso. That fall landed on number 32, Joe Hedstrom. Trinity Christian will go to the line for one. That shot missed by Dion McMoglin. They will take possession here. Jay McClark with the ball on the left side, guarded by Woodyard. Tries to drive down, low spin move. Eric Cohn, deep three here, top of the key. No good, rebound by Diavero. Diavero looking down low for Edwards. Just passes too hard, too quick. Had to go up with it, even Sheldon Edwards' point. He got to go up with that ball there. Just a bit of a miscommunication by the freshman and the sophomore. Barnheiser will get it to the right side of Johnson. Johnson going right corner to McLaughlin for three. No good. Rebound by Edwards, and it looks like it's going to be going the opposite way as there was a foul called, and that foul is going to be in Braxton Barnheiser. That will land as his third foul overall in this game. Interesting play over there. Edwards went for the ball, and Barnheiser just continued to fight for it, thinking that he could have possession. 
Edwards passes to Hedstrom. Knocked out by Miles Johnson. And Trinity Christian will end up with the steal. Jalen Clark, right side, gets it to Miles Johnson. Again, right hand goes in. And that basket will count. Let's see who the foul is on here. It looks to be on Joe Hedstrom once again. That will be his second foul of the game. Thoppel still up by 30 in this contest as Miles Johnson will try to finish the three-point play. And he will miss. Almost got his own shots rebound. And Diavera will take the ball down the floor as he quickly crosses the timeline. Gets to Wood. Your left corner. Three-point shot. Edwards. It's good. Beautiful shot by Sheldon Edwards. Wide open. Was able to take his time. Set that one up. Trinity Christian Barnheiser trying to answer back. Misses his three-point attempt. And Diavero will take the ball down for the Beacons. With your top of the key, gets down to Headstrom. Easy, easy left side shot made by Joe Headstrom. 84-49 Beacon lead. DMing Longland will bring the ball down the floor. Just under nine minutes, 30 seconds to go. Doggone trying to find anyone, finds Eric Cohn on the left side. Cohn going back to McLaughlin, 4-3, it's good. Seen a lot of McLaughlin so far. He's got eight points, now adds to it to 11. And a beautiful move coming by Keandre Young. The reverse hand layup by the freshman. Deion McLaughlin trying to answer back. You will be called with the offensive foul. That will be a charge of McLaughlin. That'll be his first foul. We're seeing the likes of Brock Pappas finally in a game. This will be his first Legion game played and Connor Barrett. Nine minutes remaining in this contest as well. Great to see Brock Pappas, the Washington Township native. Grew up here in Valparaiso, Indiana. He grew up a big time Valparaiso Beacon fan. The Averro to Pappas in the right corner. Pappas dribbles, looks for Trey Woodyard. Woodyard goes opposite for Barrett, finds Keandre Young. Young drives in, tries to go in for the dunk, gets fouled as he goes up on the attempt, and he will go to the line for two. Good drive there by Young. Thought he had the opening, and Trinity Christian pretty much just turned around and fouled him immediately as he went up. He'll be shooting two at the line. Makes the first one for Keandre Young. Interesting fact about Keandre Young, his favorite movie is Blue Chips. What a great movie. Of course, after this game on your lovely Saturday night, you can, of course, tune into a nice movie, looking for Blue Chips on whatever streaming service you got. And no, we are not a sponsor for Blue Chips, I do promise. Valpo now 88, Trinity Christian 52. Both free throw attempts good by Keandre Young. Trinity Christian, Jalen Clark trying to drive down low. Misses the basket, but gets fouled as he goes up on the attempt. It's going to be on Brock Pappas. That will land us his first foul. Jalen Clark will now go to the line. He's a 90% free throw shooter. He's only missed one so far of the season, and he makes his first. Jalen Clark, the South Holland, Illinois native. Last year was a red shirt, and now this year he's playing quite often. Misses the second, however, only missed two free throws on the season. Brock Pappas with the rebound. There is Diavero on the right side, drives down low. Double team, tries for Pappas. Pappas tries to spin move, can't find an open lane. Back top of the key for Keandre. He drives it and he dunks it in. Wow, what a play by Keandre Young. 90-53, Valpo lead, eight minutes under. Braxton Barnizer tried to drive in. Connor Baird able to knock that one, and it lands out of bounds. And holy cow, we got one heck of a lead here for you Beacon fans. 90-53, to Valpo leads here as we will take a 60-second break here. We'll be back on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Back with the county, I guess. What... March Madness. It's all about the excitement, the fans, the history, 
the big moment. It's all about the madness. And March, it begins here. It's the 2022 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Tournament, March 3rd to March 6th, presented by Valley Sports Indiana. Visit ArchMadness.com for ticket information. It takes courage to face up to things like volatile markets and Wall Street money traps. If you're unsure, worried, or losing sleep about your money, do something about it. Call Joe Murphy and the team at Murphy Wealth Management, proudly serving the Chicago land and Northwest Indiana communities at 800 930 5905. Again, call 800 930 5905. Live on WVR 95.1 and streaming at WVRTheSource.com. You're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. Obviously, student athletes are positively impacting the communities where they live by sharing views and fostering a climate for change for future Valley pioneers. To learn more about mobilizing voices for change, visit mvc-sports.com slash one valley. Valpo with a 90-53 point lead over Trinity Christian. Seven minutes, 51 seconds left to go in this game. And let's just take a look at some of the stats. I mean, it's just crazy that every Valpo player, except for Brock Pappas, who had just checked in about two minutes ago, have scored in this game. And so far, we haven't seen too much of Ben Cricky or Edwards or even Anderson in the second half. But really, there's no reason to. As with such a big lead, you want to give a lot of your guys a break. And because, I mean, hey, you've got Drake in your next game. That's on December 2nd. You know, you got a few practices before them, but you want to give some of those guys some rest. Get some of the guys off of the bench to get some playing time in here. A few Valpo players. Checking back in, got Connor Barrett back in this game, as well as Keandre Young, Joe Hedstrom, Darius Iovero, and Trey Woodyard. Trinity Christian with the ball, McLaughlin with a three pointed set, no good, rebounded by Keandre Young. Darius Iovero gets it to Connor Barrett at the right side of the three point line. Iovero with the ball now here. Back top of the key for Woodyard, 4 3, no good. And it looks like it's going to be an offensive foul on Joe Hedstrom. He's even a little bit confused. It looks like Brady LaRook just kind of fell down. But that will be Hedstrom's next foul here. That will be three on Joe Hedstrom overall. And five for the Beacons. Well, five for the Trolls here in this contest. Deming Loughlin drives, goes to the right hand, just misses it, or rolls off the rim. Rebound by Keandre Young. Young, left side, Barrett. Tries to drive down low, gets to the Valley logo. Joe Hedstrom, top of the key, fakes the shot and drives into the basket with a year of step. Beautiful drive by Hedstrom. Brady LaRoop bring the ball down the floor. Jayla Clark hands it off to Braxton Barnheiser as he goes to that right side. Hands it off with a little contention by Vince Overway. Gets it back to Barnheiser. He looked for a three. Couldn't find it. Barnheiser driving. Good pass there by Overway. Just can't land that ball in. Rebound again by the Beacons. Trey Woodyard gets that ball down low to Keandre Young. Reverse layup shot is no good. It will be a foul on the floor before the shot was taken. He did put that ball in the basket. It was a good reverse hand layup, but that ball will be taken out of bounds. That will also land the Trolls' sixth foul of the game, and that will be on Vince Overway. And overall, it's his first foul. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Diavero will take the ball out of bounds here. He's on the near side here. Gets it to Barrett on the near side. 4-3, no good. And a rebound by Braxton Barnheiser. Barnheiser getting that ball on the right side to Vince Overway. Overway handing it off to LaRoupe. LaRoupe tries to lay it in, and he scores. LaRoupe with his first points of the game. That's his first shot attempt of the game as well as he lands in two. Diavero goes to the left side, goes opposite to Woodyard. Woodyard gets it to Keandre Young. Goes cross court to Barrett. Barrett to Diavero. Diavero goes right side, rolls off a screen, gets it to Barrett on the left side. He'll drive in, goes to the Valley logo, passes to Woodyard for a dunk, and he slams it in. 
Beautiful slam coming from Trey Woodyear, the freshman for the Beacon squad. 94-55 Valpo lead. A little bit of a battle down low, waiting for the jump ball call, and they finally do call it. The possession arrow does favor Valparaiso. Dion McLaughlin just bobbled the ball a little bit too much. Just had that ball out of bounds. Looked to be like it was out of bounds instead of the jump ball. Well, it's applied. Valpo will take possession. Five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this contest. Connor Barrett gets it to Diavero. Diavero, four Woodyard, four three, air balls it. Joe Edson try to get the rebound. Good job by Brady LaRoe just standing in his way, waiting for him to go around. Barnheiser with the big three. That is airballed and no good as well. Luke Morrill checking in the game, getting his first game action here as well. Lombard, Illinois native. He's a junior for this Beacon squad. Hasn't seen too much playing time so far this season. Didn't see too much last year. Suffered a little bit of an injury as well. Joe had some driving spin move. No good. It's going to go off the hands of Braxton Barnheiser. And Valpo will be able to maintain possession. James Pennington checking back in the game here for Trinity Christian. Interesting move by Jason Hawkins. Probably wants to continue to challenge his players as well as number 32, Eric Cohn, checking in this game as well. Two starters that haven't seen too much action here in the last six minutes of play. Pass into Joe Hedstrom, bobbles the ball. It's able to be taken by D.M. McLaughlin as he'll try to drive down. Good ball handling moves by McLaughlin. Pennington drives in left hand off the glass, scores. Good move by James Pennington of Trinity Christian. That puts him at 57 points in this contest. Darius Diavero hands it off to Connor Barrett. Right side goes top of the key to Hedstrom. To Keandre Young. Drives to the left block. Can't find anything. Back out to Hedstrom. 4-3. Hits the top of the rim. Doesn't make it in. Bounces off and rebound by Pennington. Pennington gets it to Eric Cohn. Goes left side to Jalen Clark. Opposite side to Deion McLaughlin. Reverse layup. Just not enough. Didn't put enough arc on that. That's no good. Diavero for Clark. No good. Excuse me, that is Diavero to Keandre Young. Try to hit the alley-oop. That's no good. And a rebound by Clark to Pennington. Back out to Deion McLaughlin. In the right corner. Top of the key to Cone. To Pennington. To Clark on the left corner. Clark tries to drive. In, guarded by Keandre Young. Puts up the jumper. No good. Rebound by Joe Hedstrom. Under four minutes remaining here in this contest, 94-57, Valpo lead, Connor Barrett, right corner, 4-3, misses. Keandre Young tries to take it up, and it's good. Seen some sloppy defense off Trinity Christian, but it's hard to play aggressive basketball when you're down 96-57. to Deion McLaughlin will dribble the ball on the right side, slow tempo offense for the Trolls. Just under three minutes, 30 seconds here. McLaughlin, 4-3. That's no good. Hedstrom rebounds that ball for the Beacons. He'll try to get it to Darius Diavero. He will. Diavero to Barrett, right side. Barrett drives in, tries to floor, and it scores. Touches the top of the rim, and Valpo will take a timeout. This will be a full Beacon timeout. We'll be back here in just 60 seconds. 98-57 Valpo lead here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Yo, yo, this is your cup holder talking. The little round thing between your car seats. Now, I normally have a nice cold bottle of Mountain Dew in me. But at the moment, I'm empty. That's right, no Mountain Dew. Nothing in here but a couple of quarters and a dime. A fully capable cup holder like me is carrying your loose change. Look, I'm not made for loose change. I'm made to keep Mountain Dew within reach at all times. Just inches from your hand. So find the store already. Grab some Dew. Toss it back, then place that bottle where it belongs. Mountain Dew. Do the Dew. Hey, you! Don't... There's no need to fear. The First Source Bank mobile app is here. As fast as a mobile deposit. Built to pay bills instantaneously. Powered to balance budgets. And with a simple tap, a call is placed for that personal touch. All this power is disguised as a mild-mannered app on your phone. Ready to fight for your financial freedom. 
Live on WVUR 95.1 and streaming at WVURthesource.com, you're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. We're back here in the Arc Gumbo 98, Trinity Christian 57. Now, at one point, it was a close game early in the first half, and at halftime, it was a pretty decently close game, 47-26. Nothing to, excuse me, really talk about too much in, that, in terms of the first half. Top out a 21-point lead. They've now doubled it, and it's at 20-point lead. There's going to be a 20 more points to add on to that 21 points. 98-57, Valpo leading in this competition. Just some great basketball from Valpo that we've seen here. Trinity Christian, they've fought back and they've fought hard in some ways, and we've seen a little stretches so far. Back to Barnheiser with 14 points. We've also seen Dean McLaughlin with 11. There's still players that are fighting in this contest. That's a great thing, you know. That's something you look up to and head coach Jason Hawkins. His team is still playing strong. Yes, they've had a couple of defensive stretches where they're just not playing tough enough. But at the same time, when you're down 98-57, you got to stay motivated. He's able to keep his team motivated in this game for the Trolls. Ball will be inbounded by James Pennington. He'll take that ball across the timeline. He's double teamed now at the top. Brady Lurup will pass that ball to Eric Cohn for three in the corner. It's good. 98-60 now, under three minutes remaining in this game. Diavero will get it to Brock Pappas as he is checked into the game. Screen by Pappas. Barrett tried to get it down low to him, but Jalen Clark able to steal that ball and a turnover for the Beacons. McLaughlin trying to drive. Spin move. Puts it up. Doesn't get it. Gets his own rebound to make the putback. Gets two points in. Diavero singling that loop. Morrill shall go down low. We're seeing a beautiful three-point basket by Connor Barrett. Jalen Clark trying to drive. Diavero able with the steal. Barrett trying to get that ball down. Keandre Young looked like he possibly had possession there. Puts that ball up and an easy two points by Keandre Young. You're seeing on the sidelines, we're seeing coach, associate head coach Luke Gore and Matt Lodge say, slow tempo, slow tempo. Let's slow some things down here. And a foul called on Valpo. He'll be on Luke Morrill. That will be his first foul. And the team's sixth foul. It's a 103 to 62. Valpo lead here. It's the first 100 point game we've seen out of this Beacon squad so far this season. I believe it's the first point game we've seen over 90 points for this Valpo team this season. Brady Lerup goes to the line. The Tinley Park, Illinois native. Played all nine games for Trinity Christian. Misses his first free throw. Go up for the second, and he'll make that one. Valpo will take the ball down the floor. Keandre Young, left corner, gets it back out to Luke Morrill. Luke Morrill will try to drive, and he'll get fouled on the drive. That foul's going to land on number 33, Brady LaRoop. And Luke Morrill will go to the line. Hasn't taken a free throw attempt yet. We'll see how Morrill does here. The Lombard, Illinois native, makes his first. Now he's 1-1 on the season. Enjoys fishing and wake surfing. Man, that's got to be some fun hobbies for Morrill. And those fun hobbies are leading to two points as he makes both from the charity stripe. Minute 30 remaining in this game. Deion McLaughlin will go to the top of the key. Good move. Drives in. Right hand. No good. Emmanuel Jones tries to put that back. Keandre Young with the rebound for the Beacons. Young hands it off to Pappas. Pappas driving, gets fouled on the drive, and Brock Pappas will see his first attempts here at the charity strike. And that will be a number 30 Oates. That will be Jared Oates for Trinity Christian. That will be his first foul as Pappas goes to the line for a pair. He'll miss his first. A 
if he makes this, this will be his first points ever in a Valpo uniform. And he makes it! Congratulations, Brock Pappas. That was your first points in a Valpo uniform. One minute, 15 seconds remaining, 106-63. Valpo lead here. Emmanuel Jones for Trinity Christian. Able to get that one in on the right side off the glass. Just a minute remaining. Diavero signals to Morrill. Pappas puts up a screen for Diavero. Rolls off that one. Gets it to Luke Morrill. Morrill for three. Rims out. No good. Front down low. Emmanuel Jones able to get the rebound. Tim McLaughlin going towards that right side. Tries a fake. Good Euro step in. Left hand layup off the glass is good. Just 40 seconds remaining. 10 seconds in between the shot clock and the game clock here in the arc. Andre Young with a three-point attempt. Hits the top of the rim. No good. Still got some time separation in between the game clock and the shot clock. That would be like about .2 seconds here. Manuel Jones tries to take up another one. It looks like touch like by a beacon. Rebounded by Deion McLaughlin. He'll bring that ball back out. 15 seconds remaining. He'll fight down low. Floater is good. And a blocking foul called on Brock Pappas. Pappas tried to take the charge. Basket is good. And Trinity Christian will take a free throw. McLaughlin will find the line here once again. He was 45% from the charity stripe coming into this game. Not a very good free throw shooter for this Trolls team. And he will not make that one seemed that he thought he had two. I mean, everyone just stood there, and Pappas just grabbed the rebound. Diavero will cross the timeline, and that will end things here in Valparaiso for the Beacons. Valpo 106, Trinity Christian 69, Beacons win. Valpo will increase to a 3-4 and four record overall. That will put him on a two-game win streak. Trinity Christian, this game will not count for the Trolls. They will still remain at their 5-4 and four record overall, but would be a 5-5 five and five with the head count this game. But they will not get a win here in Valparaiso. They will continue their losing streak. Valpo will continue their winning ways, as we hope that they will in the game against Drake on December 2nd. We've got a lot of talk about here in our halftime show. We'll talk to associate head coach Luke Gorn, his thoughts at the end of this game during our halftime show. We'll be back here in two minutes on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Prefer 4 to 1 over any other orthopedic practice in the region? Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute offers the specialized bone, joint, and muscle care needed to keep you in motion. Our world class providers serve as the official team physicians for Valparaiso University. And we have proudly delivered specialized, experienced care throughout Northwest Indiana for more than 50 years. To learn more about Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute, visit lbji.com. At Wings Etc., we love sports. So much that we pack our walls with tons of big flat screens tuned to the very best sports programming. At Wings Etc., we love big, cooked and tender, crisp perfection, wings. And so do our fans who have voted our wings best in more and more cities across the Midwest. At Wings Etc., we love beer. We love it so much that we have over 40 different kinds of beers and bottles and on tap, including your favorite regional craft beers. Wings Etc. at 501 North Zoom maybe in Valparaiso and online at wingsetc.com. Kyle and Feller Tire and Lawn Company strive to exemplify the true meaning of the words trust, courtesy, and honesty. In fact, many of our customers say we've done a pretty good job of it. Since 1958, we've been providing auto repair and full service tire sales to Porter County, Indiana. Come visit us at our Valparaiso and Cross locations or check us out at Kyle-Feller.com. We look forward to many more years of providing you excellent service. Visit our Kyle and Feller, your family has to help. Whether it's buzzer beaters, big celebrations, or an electric atmosphere, we've got it all in the valley. We've got some of the best. We mean the best. We mean basketball in the nation. In the postseason, start to your We'll see you in the Quad Cities. March 10th through 13th, presented by Grinnell Mutual Insurance. Visit NBCQuadCities.com for ticket information. 
Live on WVR 95.1 and streaming at WVRTheSource.com. You're listening to the Novel Sports Radio Network. And the Beacon made a big win here over Trinity Christian. 106 to 69. That will be Valpo's first game over 90 points so far this season. And of course, the first game over 100 points as well. Let's run down some of the stats here of this game in our halftime show. Brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. LBJI is proud to be the official team physicians of Valparaiso University Athletics. Looking overall in the field goal shooting percentage, Valpo shooting 56% over Trinity Christians, 43. Valpo going 41 of 73, Trinity Christians, 26 of 60. Valpo shooting 35% from the three-point mark, and Trinity Christians shooting 40% from the three-point mark. That's about their only positive thing they did here tonight is they did shoot the three very well, which did keep them within this game at one point. At one point, this game was by two points. That was the tightest that the game had ever been. But really, it was just 10-8 to 8 the entire time Valpo did lead in this contest as well. Free throw percentage. Trinity Christian just 54%, 7 of 13. Valpo 13 of 18 with 72%. Valpo with 9 turnovers. Trinity Christian with 16. Valpo with 24 points off turnovers. Trinity Christian just gaining 11. Valpo had 46 rebounds in this game, which is an insane number to see. Trinity Christian just with 24, 33 of those defensive and 13 offensive for the Beacons and 20 and 4 for the Trolls on defense and offense. Bench points, Valpo had 51 bench points in this game. That's almost over half their points in this contest. Trinity Christian just with 23 points in this game overall in terms of the bench points. Points in the paint, Valpo had 56 points in the paint. Trinity Christian just with 26 Trinity Christian had no fast break points in this game. They had zero opportunities pretty much for fast breaks. Valpo had 24 fast break points. Two blocks for each team. 11 steals for the Beacons and 7 for the Trolls. 20 assists for Valpo and 13 for Trinity Christian. Looking at Trinity Christian overall, leading in scoring was Dion McLaughlin. He had 17 points in the game. He had a 15 Really only averaged about 8.6 points per game coming into this contest, but he kind of found his own element really in that second half. Didn't see really much action early in the first half, saw a lot of action in the second half. Following him was Braxton Barnheiser, a very good three-point shooter. Went 4 of 7 from the three-point arc with 14 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists. Following Barnheiser was... Eric Cohn, number 32, he had 12 points, went 3 of 5 with 5 assists in the game. Then following Eric Cohn, we have a couple of other great players. We have number 24, Miles Johnson, he had 8 points, 3 rebounds, and 1 assist. Overway and Pennington both had 6 points each. Clark had 1, the rope with 3 points. Number 31, Jones with 2, and Oates seeing some time on the floor but did not score. Looking at Valparaiso overall, holy cow, what a game this was for the Beacons. Ben Crickey with a great return back here to the arc for this season. He had 26 points here in this game, followed by Trevor Anderson with 17 points and three rebounds. Looking at the rest of the Beacons, of course, we have Keandre Young with 13 points, and he had seven rebounds in the contest as well as associate head coach, We'll head up here for our post-game show brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. And Luke Gore, he's got to be a little bit happier than he has been in our last previous interviews with him, of course, as Valpo does earn a big win here. And he will join us here coming on to our post-game show. Coach, you get a win here at home. It's a Trinity Christian. Your guys played hard. Your starters play hard, and you had a lot of subs come in and all score in this game. What does that mean to you as a coach? Uh, I, I thought the biggest thing we did is uh, we played as a team. We executed as a team all night offensively for the most part. At the beginning, we had a few moments that um, guys didn't do exactly what we do all the time. Uh, but then they corrected and did, did a good job. And then we re- I thought we guarded pretty well, except for two segments of the game. Um, it's always tough at the end of one of these games to 
stay locked in after guys have played a lot of minutes in a row too. So, um, but I, I thought overall we we were engaged, ready to go. And these are always tough games after a you know long road trip, a lot of games in a row, coming back from another time zone and doing that. So I thought I thought that was pretty pleased. Keandre Young, he didn't have a ton of minutes, but he played a lot in the second half. And even towards the ending minutes there, you saw a lot of action out of him. He had 13, excuse me, he had 13 points in this game with 5 of 10, but he was playing tough throughout the entirety of this game. What does that mean to you as a coach looking at Young? Well, I mean, if, if anybody was able to watch our last game against Tulane, he came up huge. I mean, he scored seven points in the last eight minutes. He had a huge deflection on Sheldon's last steal that sealed the game against Toledo. He laid out for extension and got a, tipped it to Sheldon for the steal that sealed the game. So, um, DeAndre's got a lot of a lot of a lot of things that can really help our basketball team, and he's growing each and every day, and he's getting better. And you know, it, it, his future is really really bright, and we're really really thankful he's on our team. And and uh, he's such a good guy, and he works at it. So it's just going to, you know, at times it's going to, you just got to stay with him, and, and good things are going to happen. But I thought he really did some of the things he's really special at tonight, and uh, he has some things he got to work on too. Now, Coach, with a game like this, you led throughout the entirety of the game. It's a big kind of blowout game, as we like to say. But at the same time, how does this prepare you in going in for that game against the Bulldogs? I think the biggest thing it does is, once again, when you have a trip like we had, that, that first game back, sometimes you're a little rusty, so a little out of breath, a little. And I thought this was a, a very good game to play uh, to get that out of our system. Now, now we're playing, you know, the, the team that was picked to win league um, on the road um, in December, which, you know, first year to play the, 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 the team that was picked first and, and to go to their place in the first December game in the Valley history is, uh, is exciting. So we got to be ready and get after it. They're very good, as we all know. Uh, they got most of their team back from last year, and they're all about 24 and 25 years old. So um, we have to be locked in and ready to go. Well, it'll be an exciting game, and I know our fans will be sure to tune in for that game as well here on WVUR. And, Coach, congratulations on a big win, the first win here on the season in the arc, and good luck to you in Des Moines, Iowa as well. So thank you again, Coach. Thanks, Dave. That's Associate Head Coach Luke Gore of the Valparaiso Beacons with a big win here against Trinity Christian. Again, that final score, 106 to 69. It's always a pleasure to talk to Luke Gore. Great guy and a great coach overall. And just a couple of final things that we have for you here, just going over some of the rest of the stats. I did stop at Sheldon Edwards. He had 11 points, went 3 of 6 with 4 rebounds in the contest. Following Sheldon Edwards as he had 11 points, we go to Joe Hedstrom. Four of seven had three points, and so far that's Hedstrom's high in a game in a Valpo uniform as well for the Beacons. Then he is followed by Connor Barrett with seven points. He went two of eight, just one of seven from the three-point, had one rebound and one assist in the game. Then we move to Trey Woodyard. He had six points, went three of seven. Then moving to a couple of other players. is Every player who did score in this game, so we do want to give credit to everyone who credit is due. Thomas Gaithier, not too much playing time overall in the game, but he did have four points in the game. Aaron Gordon with three. Kevion Taylor with five. Darius Ciavero with two. Luke Morrill with two. And Brock Pappas earning his first point in a Valpo uniform with one in this game. Valpo, they played hard, they fought hard. This does bring them to a winning, excuse me, this brings them to their winning ways once again. That's a two-game winning streak for this Beacons team. They will fall, excuse me, they will go to a three and four record. They will start Valley play against Drake in December. And as you meant, as even Luke Gore mentioned, it's interesting to be playing a team in the Valley, especially in your own conference, depending on no matter what it is, you're playing that team, and it's in December. You don't hear that very often. It's a very rare thing. It's a very rare scheduled game, but it's very interesting to be a great game. Definitely you're going to be able to tune in for that one. That also brings Matt Lonick's record overall to 86-82. and 82. Jason Hawkins, the game will not count for the Trinity Christian Trolls, and they will still be at 5-4 and 4 and 3-3 three and three in the CCAC. They're a pretty good team in the CCAC. They do compete. They're predicted to finish kind of in the middle of just about the pack in the CCAC. So look, if you're interested in some good NAIA basketball, look for Trinity Christian as well. They do fall here to Valparaiso in two big halves for the Beacons. 
And again, it's just a great game. Great to be a part of it. 106-69 final score. We hope that you join us Monday, November 29th here on the Dotwell Sports Radio Network as the women's team will take on the Western Michigan Broncos as Garrett Willis and myself, Zach Collins, will have that call from Kalamazoo at 6 o'clock for the pregame show starting at 5.30. The men's team will be back in action on Thursday as they travel to the land of corn in Iowa to take on the Dre Bulldogs in Des Moines, Iowa. As Ty Ico and Brandon Vickery will have that call for you at 8 p.m. We want to give a special and quick thanks to our sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible, including Hungry Howie's, First Source Bank, Allegis Credit Union, Culver's, Hot Ain Express, Lakeshore Bone and Joint, Royal Excursions, Wings, etc., Berkshire Hathaway, Heidelgen and Feller, Pepsi, Bud Light, Series Discount Windows, Northwest Health, and Ticket Smarter. We'd also like to thank our engineer who made tonight's call possible to come on the hour wave, which is Oliver back in the studio. Oliver, I hope you enjoy that lovely cookie I gave you. Thank you for coming out on your break to help us get on the airways for this game. Tonight's presentation of Valparaiso Basketball has been an exclusive presentation of Van Wagner Sports and Entertainment. The general manager for Van Wagner for Valpo is David Kay. This broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Valparaiso Men's Basketball on WVUR 95.1 FM. And any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this broadcast without the express written consent of WVUR is prohibited. The general manager of WVUR is Garrett Willis. The sports director for WVUR is Jeremy Lebuke. And the programming director for WVUR is myself, Zach Collins. Once again, your final score from the arc is Valparaiso wins big, 106-69 to over Trinity Christian. I'm Zach Collins. Thank you for listening to another presentation of Valparaiso basketball here on the Valpo Sports Radio Network. Enjoy what is left of your Saturday night. Don't text and drive, and we'll see you on Monday.